I hope everyone's having a good day. We had just finished up with some consults and this lady um, spent some time discussing what would help her, mostly with this pooch down here. We get this a lot, people that have, ladies that have had prior, tum, uh, sorry, prior um, kiddos, they've gotten stretched out skin. She's had some children in the past, it's stretched out the skin. She's <clears throat> great BMI, she does not need to lose any weight. Um, and, uh, but she's got all this loose skin here. So the question is, and this is what I want to discuss with you guys to hopefully, <clears throat> um, for you all to learn and answer questions that you guys might have is what do we do about this loose skin? So when you have this skin laxity here and it's slumping over, the first thing I want to assess is with you in the sitting position. So right now she's standing. Um, and she sent us some pictures of her in the sitting position because I want to see how much skin is there that's loose in the sitting position. Because it's one thing when you're standing, well, what does standing do? Standing causes your skin to stretch out a little bit, but when you're sit sitting, your skin can cl collapses down more. And you want your results to be just as um, good when you're standing versus sitting. Because if you're sitting, if you're standing, and your skin looks appears tight, but when you're sitting, it's all rolled over. That's of concern. All right, so here you can see the roll more prominent with her in this sitting position. And so she um, would not benefit from J plasma or body tight in this lower abdomen area. This is just way too much loose skin. She already has a roll here. She needs to have the skin removed in order for there to be um, skin tightening and for this this pouch to not be here. It affects, she said, when she's wearing her clothes um, with the roll, when she sits down, she doesn't like it and she wants to have her skin <clears throat> um, back to being tight like it was prior to having kids. So the question is, is do we do a mini tuck, a full tuck, or what we call a hybrid tuck? And let's go through each one of those and explain them, okay? So a mini tuck is just addressing the loose skin below the belly button, and it does not address the skin above the belly button that's loose, or does it tighten up any of um, her diastasis? Now, she does not have a significant diastasis, even though she's been um, pregnant a few times, she does not have a significant diastasis. Her main issue and concern is she wants to get this loose skin um, taken care of. So if we were to do a mini tuck, the incision would be very low. And this is something to clarify with a mini tuck. A mini tuck doesn't mean a mini tiny little scar. A mini tuck means that there's a smaller amount of skin that is removed than a standard tuck. She still needs to have her incision go to here, really, really, really down low, very hidden, but it needs to go over to here because if it was just in the suprapubic area right in here, above the, right around the Mons area, this skin here, even if pulling it forward, would still be some loose skin. So we're gonna make the incision down here, nice and low, coming around and carrying it over to here. So she understands that. When you do have a mini tuck, you're pulling this skin downwards and you're keeping your belly button there. And so when I pull this skin down and keep the belly button there, what does it do to the belly button? Well, it does definitely pull the belly button so that it looks more um, downwards and her belly button is already appears to be kind of looking more downwards and it would just make it um, appear to be, look more um, uh, downwards. And so that is one of the things that is a negative about a tummy tuck is that it can pull the belly button and make it look like it's really, really getting pulled downwards. The second thing is it does not address any of the loose skin above the belly button. How do I know she has some loose skin? It's because when she is sitting down, you can see her skin is hovering over her belly button there. So you can see here how this skin is hovering over that belly button. And when that skin is over that belly button, that means that there's some loose skin up here. She doesn't really feel it. It doesn't bother her that much. But one of the things you see is that a person will get this skin super tight. And then once this skin gets super tight and this skin above here is loose, it kind of looks abnormal. It just doesn't look as good 
from an aesthetic standpoint because you have really tight skin and then you kind of have this loose skin up here. And even though it doesn't look super loose, um, it will look even more loose when um, the skin is tightened down. So we can do a mini tuck, remove the skin. Like I said, the belly button kind of gets pulled down a little bit. <clears throat> And then we can use J plasma or uh, body tight in this upper abdomen because she doesn't have a lot of loose skin and it can help tighten up that skin. That would take three to four months to start seeing results up to 12 months to finally get skin tightening, but that is an option. So mini tuck with body tight face, sorry, body tight or Renuvian J plasma in the upper abdomen to help tighten up that skin. So we went over that as option number one for her. Option number two would be a full tummy tuck. Um, a full tummy tuck would be removing all of the skin from, from that same area here and going all the way up here and having this all come down. Benefits of that is that more skin is removed and so it's, um, it's, it's, gonna, list, it's gonna lead to more tighter consistency of the entire abdomen. I could then tighten any diastasis she has in the rectus muscles coming down and in the oblique muscles. <clears throat> um, and then the belly button skin here would be freed up here and would be pulled down. My only issue with that is I don't think this skin here will be able to be pulled all the way down. So she would end up having this incision that goes down here, like we said, and then there would be a small vertical line going down. And the reason there is that small vertical line going upwards is because the skin can't get pulled all the way down and there is a hole um, in this skin right here where the belly button was attached and pulled down. The other downside is the cost of that type of procedure because it's spending more time in tightening the muscles and removing more skin. Um, the, the cost of the surgery is more than just a mini tuck or a hybrid tuck, which is option number three. A hybrid tuck is where I pull some of the upper abdomen skin downwards um, and it has to really do with the belly button. And I'll explain that now. Incision still down low, just like the other two. This belly button, you have two options. Option number one is it can be detached from the fascia here from the base and it can be what's called floated downwards. And so that will help tighten the skin because this skin up here is tightened um, as we pull downwards. The downside to that is it places the belly button fairly low. And a lot of people don't like just from an aesthetic standpoint and they just feel like it looks weird when their belly button, instead of being right here, it is down here. So that's understandable. And she did not want to have that. So what can be done is the skin around the belly button is removed. This area is all freed up. I pull all of the skin downwards and I think where this um, area of skin that has a little opening from where it was released from the belly button is going to land about right here. And then I will, she would then have a small little vertical line about this spot right here going up. And so we don't tighten the, uh, the diastasis um, if there is none. We sh and she doesn't, we don't think she has a diastasis, so that wouldn't be tightened. But what this does allow is to free the belly button, allow the skin to be pulled down. So this skin also then tightens up right in here. And then the downside to it is that where this belly button was freed from the skin, there is again a small opening and there is a small little vertical incision when that skin's closed about right here. She actually wants to proceed with that. And I think it's a good option for her. She doesn't plan, she doesn't wear bikinis. She doesn't go to the beach a lot and um, she's not gonna be in swimsuits. She's perfectly fine with having a small little vertical incision here. The belly button stays right there. When the skin pulls down, there's just a new little incision that's open, just like a standard tummy tuck where the belly button's um, brought through the skin. 
and a nice little natural belly button is uh, created from um, this position. And she's fine with having a little vertical incision right here. And the skin will get pulled down as much as possible. And so it'll allow for more skin tightening up here, as well as obviously the skin tightening down here. Um, and then there'll just be that little vertical line. That's called a hybrid tummy tuck because it addresses both the upper abdomen <clears throat> and it's a little bit more than a, a mini tuck. Um, and the difference between this and versus a real tummy tuck is there's a little bit less skin that's removed as well as we don't tighten up the rectus diastasis. So I know it's a lot, but that's how you can address lower abdominal skin laxity and mild upper abdominal skin laxity. Please um, post if you have any questions about that and we'd be happy to answer.